Hey guys, Rob Murray back again from Intrigue. Uh, I've been doing some I Am In A Cars a lot recently with other people, so I figured I'd get back to doing a couple of solo uh, shout outs with some ideas that might help you grow your business. So um, this one I want to touch on uh, a piece I'm kind of writing about right now is around culture and growing culture and building culture, sustaining culture, all that kind of stuff. So the, the first step I wanted to kind of break into is around simplifying the whole perspective because a lot of times I talk about culture or hear other people speaking about it and it's often perceived as like an intangible and sometimes people it's kind of fluffy and you know you look at uh, cultural values in a corporate environment and sometimes they can be just you know writing on a wall and it's just like a poster you see in a boardroom but it really doesn't have any life to it so I wanted to kind of give some perspective on how uh, we can look at culture and then how we can make it a tangible thing because if you consider um, a culture, whether it's intentional or not, uh, inside an organization, it's often something we can feel when we walk inside an organization or talk to somebody from an organization. Um, sometimes you can you can see it. You know, it's, it can be vibrant or it can be you know the opposite and it can be really dreary. Um, and sometimes you can hear it. And I, some uh, some indications that I've seen in the past around a, a strong culture is a lot of the people on a team talking about you know we we all do this we all do this versus they inside an organization and the, and you know um, they being you know maybe management or the rest of uh, an organization and it's not really uh, cohesive when people are talking about their organization so that's just a couple of quick little examples but um, I wanted to kind of break it down into a simplistic perspective and and give you kind of a viewpoint that might allow you to you know look at culture a little bit differently and maybe uh, take some steps in, in growing it yourself so the first thing that I always talk about is the, the Petri dish. And if you consider, uh, you know, the grade seven science experiments where people would, you know, grow plants and they'd have a hypothesis around, you know, what's the best environment for a plant to grow. And some people use water, maybe juice, and maybe even cola. And we all know what the outcome is going to be before it happens. We know cola is not going to help plants grow. But it's a really cool micro uh, analogy, I think, of what culture really is and sometimes I think we overcomplicate things inside organizations and if we just take a bit more of a simplistic look at things uh, it can be a lot easier to manage so um, job as leadership or owner inside an organization is to build the petri dish to create a culture that can grow and thrive uh, or if it's not necessarily intentional it could potentially lead to a culture that dies and our job really is to build the environment for the culture that we want to live and thrive um, and, and make it possible for everybody to kind of um, do their own thing and have a great time while they do it. And so that this idea of a Petri dish is just really, if you consider, you know, we're, we're all, as people, we're all bacterial organisms, you know, we're all alive. And if you really look at it as a simplistic perspective, there's some essentials we need to, to live, and then there's some other things that we need to really thrive and be successful and enjoy what we do. So, you know, basically, in order to live, you know, we need some simple things. Oxygen, water, food, shelter. It doesn't really get much more than that. If we have those four things, we're, we're living. Uh, in terms of thriving, um, you know, I'd consider things like emotional support, connections, social connections, um, achievement. These types of things allow us to really thrive and, you know, really be happy in our everyday. So, you know, when it comes to building culture, we really need to just look, just take a step back and really understand, okay, well, what, what is it that we want to foster and what kind of environment is going to allow that to happen? And so really, I think it's kind of a two-step process uh, and it's, they're, they're simple. They're not always easy. So the first step is identify the values, identify the culture that we want to grow. And, uh, you know, at Intrigue, we, we value lots of things, but really when it comes down to some core ideas, we value um, honesty, we value uh, leadership, we value trust, we value fun, and we value learning. And we bring those things to life with standards that we talk about, like practicing open and honest communication, uh, getting outside our comfort zone, doing what we say we're going to do when we say we're going to do it, practicing unquenchable thirst for, no for applicable knowledge. Uh, and there's a couple others, but I don't need to get into the whole thing. But the point is, we've identified our values, and now we can create an environment to make those values come to life. But the second step, after we identify the values, is to live them out. And as leaders, um, I know that when uh, Paul and I started you know, trying to develop what the values were for the company, we really kind of thought about a lot of things of like what we should be. 
and put these idealistic values on top of the organization. And when we were doing this, I mean, we were only about five people, so it wasn't a lot of people that we were doing this with. But we realized after a few months of, you know, trying to live out these values that they weren't necessarily true to us. And I think that's really, really important when identifying values, because if we identify values that aren't us, it's going to be really difficult to live them out. Whereas if we identify values that are exactly aligned with what we do day in and day out, then it's a lot easier to live them out and be authentic in the way that we run the organization. So, you know, for us, we identified our values and now we live them out. And then the in living them out, not only we have to lead by example, but we have to put mechanisms inside the organization to bring them to life. So for example, we value leadership, which is why we developed a program called leader building. And leader building is a very simple approach to a weekly habit of learning and reflection. Every team member in the organization reads a book or a a blog or watches a video, they reflect on it and they put actionable takeaways into a submission form that we have on our website. And then, you know, weekly, um, we'll go in and give some feedback in terms of, you know, the, the perspective and, you know, if we in, are encouraging it or if there's maybe a different view that the person can take that we want to give them uh, an, an opportunity to see. So really, you know, culture isn't about, you know, managing something that doesn't exist and has these altruistic values. It's got to be authentic and real to us. And we got to identify those values. We got to speak about them like crazy. And then we got to live them out by example and put mechanisms into the organization to make them come to life. So this is something that's like near and dear to my heart. And I think it's a ton of fun. We're really lucky at Intrigue because we have a great culture and the team inside our four walls is, you know, second to none. And I couldn't be happier to go to work every day. So really, we just took the simplified approach of like understanding that we're here to design a Petri dish to help people thrive and be really successful and happy while they do it. And the beauty, the beautiful part of identifying values and living them out every day is it makes it a lot easier to figure out who we want to bring inside the organization. Because if they don't necessarily live out the values that we have every day, it's going to be difficult for them to come in and thrive inside the organization. So that becomes a huge part of recruitment process and really externally communicating to people that are considering being a part of the team that these are the values we live by. And if they sound like they're exactly like you, then you want to be here. And if there's a part of them that sound like they don't want to be, you don't want to be like that, then don't come into the organization. And there's a whole other approach to, to recruitment that I want to bring to you guys. That's a different video altogether. And uh, I really want to just kind of simplify the idea of culture and how it is a tangible thing, even though a lot of people think it's intangible. Because if you can feel it, you can see it, and you can you know hear it, then it's there, right? It's a thing. And uh, we really got to make it so that it's, it's something that's positive inside our organization because culture can have a huge spectrum all the way from toxic to, you know, energized. And, and whether we're contr- like controlling or, or managing or, or building the environment to make it come to life, we really want to be focusing on getting an energized culture where people feel great to come to work, they're stoked on the work they're doing, they love working with it, each other as a team, and they're not going home drained and, and hurt or emotionally unsatisfied. So if we just, you know, break it down simple, we're all organisms, we're all just living beings, and we need certain conditions in order to live and thrive. And once we identify those values and live them out every day and then build mechanisms to make them come alive in their, inside the organization, then the culture starts to grow. And I mean, it might seem oversimplified from that approach, but that's the idea. You know, Usually the best ideas are simple and hopefully this perspective gives you a little bit of a lens to help you build your own culture. So if you have any comments or questions, leave them below and I'll be happy to make a video or even just answer them directly. So thanks a lot, guys. See ya. Bye.